Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. All right, so it's wonderful to speak to you both today. How are you today? Yeah, we are great. Yeah, we are great. Um, if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you both to get into the industry? How did we get to the film industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I, I was uh, actually, I knew that I wanted to direct since I was like, at least 17 or 18. So I just went to the film school. And before that, I was a musician. I, 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 I finished the musical school, but that I knew that I did, don't want to be a classical film, classical musician. So I went to the film school, the famous Polish Lodge Film School, where Polanski were studying. And, you know, this was like, uh, very very traditional place i had the chance to be a student of a very very big masters well it was it was long time in 90s let's say so i had a very very crazy time then and i knew that i want to be a director but right after school actually i uh i went back to the music i recorded my first album and somehow the fate pushed me more into music so then I, I started to become a musician. I, I released a few albums by this time, by that time. And then I went back to directing a few years later, which is, I think, good because for being a director, you really need to have some experience and, you know, to have something, the stories to tell. So maybe I wasn't ready at the beginning, but, you know, being a musician and just develop myself, give me this great opportunity to, to feel more, more strong and fulfilled to become a director so of course I have some people who, who first I did this 30 minutes movie which was really which was on some film festivals then I did my first movie I was invited to do my first movie Woman's Day uh, which were in many many festivals we won many awards so that was the first step and that's how it get me to my third movie which is Girls to Buy you? The defining moment for me, it was uh, actually when I was a kid, I was performing a lot. I was performing all the time. Uh, I love to be in the center of attention. I love entertain people as well. But then I had a lot of uh, ideas for my life. I wanted to become a prime minister. I wanted to become a stock, mar um, um, stock market seller. And uh, and then I forgot about my one of my passions, the performing passion. Uh, but I was very clever to win the to perform at, at school uh, school piece of arts. Like I was always participating in the school drama things and everything. So and then I went to the university to study normal thing <laughs> like um, uh, international relations because I'm really in, I'm I, I'm really interested in politics. But then uh, during this school year, my first school year, my university year, my boyfriend dumped me and I was like, oh my God, I have to change something with my life, try, try, try to uh, uh, try something new. And then I thought like, oh, let's go to drama school. Let's, uh, let's uh, check out myself. 
and uh, and they just uh, took me for the school year in drama school and this is how it began and but i'm a very i'm a very realistic person this is why i didn't want to do it at the first place because i uh, didn't expect like why should i make a success so many people want to have this success in this industry there is 2000 people who want to go to the drama school school year and it's only 20 places there why me i didn't believe in myself <laughs> well glad you did eventually i chose uh, the same school where which maria graduated at the film school in Łódź, because I was thinking, okay, nobody will find out. I was, I'm from the capital, from the Warsaw, and I was thinking like, nobody will find out that I'm going for the auditions. And then I even like, when I finished the auditions, I left the school and I thought like, oh, there was, there, that was nice uh, journey. That was nice uh, thing to do. But I haven't expected that they gonna take me to the school because you know, there's so many people who want to become an actress. Yeah. Also, I have a similar story because I was uh, I was living in Los Angeles when I was twenty, and I was I had a I had a contract musical contract with a big EMI company by that time, and I was like sing I was there singing, you know, and I was still thinking, no, this is I mean I like it, but I still want to do something more, you know, I have something more to tell to the world, and I asked some people in LA, I I was thinking, and you see a. a but I couldn't afford it that day. And they told me, yeah, why do you want to go to LA if you have this great, if we know the language? And I was like, no fucking way. It's impossible to get there because there was like four people in one place. So I, I went just for the exams, just to see how the exams looks. And I didn't even plan to stay in Poland. I was planned to stay in, in Los Angeles and continue my uh, musical career. And then I attend, suddenly I attend to the school, which is very crazy. Because usually people are trying two or three times to get there. And then finally I, I, I was like, okay, would become, a, should I follow like my, my, my dream, you know, which I never believed it will come true. It was kind of the dream. It was kind of the dream that you think, you know, it's not gonna happen, like being a director in 90s for a woman, you know, it wasn't that obvious, you know, like when I was telling this to anyone, everybody says like, yeah, right, sure. Yeah, you can think of that, sure. So so I made this decision. I, I changed Hollywood for Hollywood. That's how we call our city. <laughs> so, yeah, Hollywood for Hollywood. And yeah, that's how I become a director in, in, at the end. <laughs> So we have a similar story there, Paulina. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so what was it about Girls to Buy that made you want to join the film? Um, and what was the initial interest in making the film? Well, for me, of course, you know, it's women's right. And I really wanted to tell the story from the woman's point of view, the story that hasn't been told. Because of course there is so many movies about escort girl or you know prostitution. There are most of them that are made by men and from the main kind of main men point of view. So for the first time I was trying to to like think what this kind of girl can feel. How can we stand for her? And society she's a villain you know guys you always have this movie about you know gangsters and you know you elevate gangsters i mean the cinema actually elevate gangsters gangsters movie you know the, the movie about get, uh, bad guys into the position of superheroes of our pop culture mm -hmm. but the uh, prostitution was never there they were all, always kind of like look you know a little bit uh they were always kind of you, you know what I mean, you know, that it was treated fair. I wanted to show the story where they can also be empowered, but they are not the victims and they're not, you know, just uh, just the second part of the story or, or you know, a prostitution with an angel heart. We've seen it many times, you know, but then I wanted to, I wanted to see people flush and grow up who, who are making mistakes, you know, but the people who are also can be able to love and inside a, 
uh, and doesn't matter what bad things she's doing, you know, I, I love her and I understand her. Mm. So for me, it was a challenge. I really wanted to do this movie because the movie before I did, I was, I, I usually did the movie about the woman heroes, you know, the rights or, I did the movie called The Ratural, the lady who wrote that she made a sexual revolution in the 70s in Poland. So, so she was very iconic and she was her, that was obvious. And now I have the, those girls, but nobody, they, nobody liked them, you know, and they all blame their, their, everybody says, yeah, it's their fault, you know, they knew what they're doing, you know. They just sell their body for money and they, 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 they do it all for each trying to say yeah it's, it's not it's not that simple as you think you know they're also humans and and it happens in Poland in the beginning of the thousands which was which was kind of a very special time in Poland in Poland we have kind of like wild wild west by this time you know the big money came everybody wanted to have part of it this this gold you know rush which was all over the place so when I saw the script, I, saw, I, I knew it, it was the movie for me to make. Yeah, and when I heard that uh, the movie is go gonna be shot about this huge affair, because I knew this affair, Girls to Die, uh, actually the Polish name for this affair is Girls from Dubai. Uh, I was like, oh my God, that's wonderful topic. And just the same as Maria said, like, it will be interesting to defend this kind of character because the media, they were like all the, there were a lot of haters of this girl because they were celebrities, singers, models, actresses who were working as a luxurious escort for the sheikhs from Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was like, oh my God, that's very interesting. And uh, when I went for the casting, it turned out that the main character actually she is uh, a pimp so she's a sutener so i was thinking like oh my god that must be very interesting character to play very complex and uh, and when i won the casting i was very happy and when i read the script i was even more happy because because the script was wonderful story i mean from the how you became victim first of all and then you you are you are a victim of someone a particularly emmy is a victim of dorota's character and then she became dorota uh, afterwards so yeah so uh, that's why i wanted to play that because you know in poland like 3 years ago when we were doing the movie uh, there weren't uh, a lot of interesting roles for uh, girls to play mainly like uh, you know you have to be beautiful or you have to suffer or something like that and here you had a solid villain to play so th this is what i liked excellent um all right great what can you tell me about emmy um, and where she fits into the story of girls to buy uh i can tell you she is uh, built actually uh from uh two different girls' uh, stories. I mean, the girls who are uh, the real person, but I met the um, protagonist because she was mainly, uh, and her name is Emilia, uh, apparently. And uh, she's kind of, uh, she's very easygoing person. She's really completely lovable. She has this winning smile. She's really talkative. And really, sh I fell in love with her from the first sight. But then uh, the author of the script, uh, Mitya Okorn, told me, be careful, she's a snake. And it's true because uh, I'm this good hearted person, you know, with the heart on my hand, but she is kind of user. I mean, she's calculating all the time. But uh, on the other hand, she's completely lovely and you really fall in love with her. Yeah, she's very easygoing, very cheerful. There's uh, nothing you can't like about her. Um, what was um, like her two different personas? Um, was that something that, that, that first attracted you to the role? Uh, yeah, because like they mixed, they took the story of Emilia 
uh, as a protagonist, but they, there are some elements of the story of the other girl, which I actually haven't met because she didn't want to, she didn't want to meet. Uh, yeah, but uh, but they they had actually the same kind of life. I mean, they began as models, as a, a beauty pageant um, participant, and and then they became uh, sex workers, the escorts. Okay. All right. So pretty pretty um, you know, hard hitting stuff. So do you have any memories from set that you'll take with you for the rest of your careers? Well, obviously, yes. Every movie is a, every movie is a great adventure, you know, and it's also a struggle. And it's the time, that's the moment that you, you think it's all going to collapse. This movie was particularly very difficult also because it was a pandemic times. We couldn't shoot, you know, wherever we want. We didn't, we wasn't sure if the movie is gonna happen, you know, it was uh, very difficult times for movie makers as well. So we've been actually doing this in those times. Also, it was a very big budget for a Polish movie, I would say. And for me as a director, you know, to have this big budget was great for me that I can shoot the scenes like a gold party, for example, you know, when I have 500 extras all, you know, uh, paint and gold and, and to have those movie sets and to have this amazing orgy to make. And I, like, I was standing on the set and I, I was like, oh my God, I'm so actually lucky, you know, because a few years before I wouldn't have this opportunity, you know, at all. probably because mostly the big budget goes to men so for women, there's also like small social drama. It's a, it's a good movie for women director, but they're not uh, giving that many like big epic movie with the big money in women's hands. So I was very lucky to be there. And yeah, I have this uh, on the gold party, we called it the gold party in the Dubai, when I saw all these people around me and I said, oh my God, it's really happening. It's, it's like we are, we are really making it alive from all the stories we heard, you know, this is so amazing. And, and the other moment was uh, about uh, Yacht in Cannes, which was my favorite thing. Like I, I really wanted to get this particular kind of, this Yacht particular, I was, searching for this yacht for two months in the internet. And it was the, the best yacht I won in the Mediterranean Sea. And of course, I wasn't sure if we're gonna get the yacht. I wanted because it was very dark. Most of the yacht looks very nice and, you know, clean and they're, 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 they're. this one was dark, you know, and has some dark energy on it. But uh, it was very nice for us just, you know, to sell it for three days, to spend nights, to spend time there and spend time in Cannes. Because what it might be interesting, the rest of it, we did all the scenes that was in Dubai, we made in Poland because of the pandemic situation. So we built all the decoration. And we have this amazing scene with the puma, uh, you know, the animal. Mm -hmm. And when we were shooting it, we just find out that police is looking for this animal and that the, the, this animal actually escaped from zoo or something. It was very <laughs> crazy. Moment. And I was like, oh my God, can life be more surprising? Because uh, like the police in Poland was looking for this exact, this animal, you know, and this animal was on my fucking set. <laughs> And I didn't know what to do because I couldn't say to the police nothing because I wanted to finish the shooting the scene, you know. The animal act really good, you know, so it was very good actor there. <laughs> yeah, I remember but that also too. I, I remember like, because I wasn't participating in the scene, but I've heard the rumors like, oh my God, there is yeah, this woman, in which is, you know, in, in all of the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I have to say, like, for me, the very important moment was uh, shooting the rape scene, which was actually very difficult. And I have to say, it, we were, we, we, we make a very big preparation for it. We did the whole kind of choreography for it. And I really want to thank you for 
because it was very, very hard and we've been shooting in a very, very hard conditions from outside. The water comes out. Do you remember that? Maybe not because you were so yes, focused the on the scene. But, but there was such a big storm and the rain comes out on the stairs, on the set, we thought we're going to be flogged, yeah. you know. And at the same moment, we have to shoot this incredibly, incredibly hard scene, emotionally hard for everybody, because I was suffering every fucking shoot take we, we were doing. I was, I was just uh, your character. So for me, it was difficult to watch and I can't imagine how difficult for you it was to play it you know yeah it was so those I, are like highlighters for me yeah actually I, I, I would remember the same uh, moments actually because I remember we were uh, kind of praying to the gods that we can because of the pandemic time uh, that we can go to Cannes because we yeah. ended all the shooting in Poland which was like the whole uh, whole part from Poland, Dubai, and we only missed this can uh, stuff to shut. And we didn't know if we will manage or the restriction, the COVID restriction and everything. So we were like praying to the God, like, please, we want to finish this movie. We want to make it done. And uh, and the rape scene, yes, I remember, yeah, there was a flood. I don't know if it's the proper word in English, but yeah, there was a full rain and, you know, the water was coming everywhere. And I remember like, uh, because we have this choreography and we even have a stand coordinator who were participating in the um, uh, coordination of this uh, scene. And I remember like between the shots, uh, he is Tomasz, uh, Tomek uh, Krzemieniecki and he actually worked lately with Tom Cruise uh, with the Mission Impossible. And I remember like he was tickling me and uh, our uh, creative producer, uh, Doda, which is iconic pop star in Poland. They were tickling me to the toes because, you know, just to take my down. Yeah, they were tickling you so you can see a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so other than COVID, can you talk about some of the challenges you had when making uh, Girls to Buy? Yeah, I think it was challenging because, you know, this uh, all this industry, sex working industry was kind of new for me. I didn't know that. And I was a little bit uh, comfortable with the topic. But then uh, I spent like three months before uh, shooting uh, with the preparation, with our rehearsals, with director and with, uh, you know, meetings with the insiders from the um, sex working industry in Poland, of course, from the luxury uh, luxury prostitution. And uh, actually it gave me another light to this uh, industry and I'm really crossing my fingers because it's still on the black market in Poland. And I'm crossing my fingers for legalization because I see that everyone's wanted, I mean, the girls and boys who are working as a sex workers, their agents, uh, which are called uh, mostly pimps, they want the legalization. And uh, and I'm really crossing my fingers. Of course, I don't believe it since we are such a Catholic country, but uh, but I think it will be better for everyone uh, just to have you know the the proper rights uh, to pay the tax and everything. Absolutely. Um, are there any other aspects of the industry that you'd like to pursue? Are there any other aspects? Yeah, of the industry that you'd like to pursue. Like, would you like to write more? Would you like to produce? Um, go well, behind actually, go in front yeah, of the I, camera? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to produce, definitely. I, I, I want to produce in the future because uh, it gives you much more... I would say freedom, you know, but uh, I think, yeah, I feel very comfortable in the industry right now, you know, I think we accomplish a lot since the last few day, a few years, you know, and this is a very good moment for a woman, for a woman to be a woman director, uh, because our voice wants to be heard. 
So I can strongly feel it at the moment. And uh, I'm sure Paulina has also many interesting roles to play now. And I'm, I'm very, I think we are both lucky, Paulina, because we yeah, are in yeah. the right moment, right time. So there's nothing to complain about. Definitely. What about you, Paulina? What would you like to do more, more of? Uh, actually, I'm uh, I'm happy with uh, how my career is developing. Uh, I'm right now doing some new project, which is uh, based on the supernatural powers, and I really love it because uh, I love this kind of stories wow. and uh, I love this uh, a little bit of right. supernatural things. And um, so, uh, and I'm gonna play in a um, thriller movie, so. I'm as well very happy about that because I'm gonna have like a, a lot of stand scene and with uh, a lot of preparation with the stand coordinators. I have to learn something new. So I'm just, uh, I'm very happy what is going on and I'm trying to do my work the best. I really love to sacrifice my heart and my soul to the characters and to the story and just to learn from what I'm doing. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, so oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I have to go because I have a casting and I have actors waiting All right. for me. No worries. No worries. So uh, you look after yourself. Thanks very maybe much. Maybe you just, you go Thank ahead. You Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. Right, take care. Bye. Have fun. What is, so what is your preferred genre and do you have any favorite films? Uh... I think my pre uh, preferred genre is mixed genre because like nowadays in a cinema, we, we see this wave of mixed genre. For example, lately I've seen the TV series, The Great, uh, produced by Elle Fanning and her sister, Dakota Fanning. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful uh, TV series. It's about the villain color character as well. The Catherine the Great, the mm -hmm. emperor, uh, empresses, Empress. <laughs> the Tsarita. Yeah, Empress. <laughs> Empress, yeah. Yeah, the Tsarita of Russia. And I think it's a good idea to make it a little bit drama, to make it a little bit uh, comedy. And I think this is nowadays when we understand that nothing is black or white, this is the good way to talk, to tell the stories to people. Absolutely, awesome. Um, and do you have any fa favorite films? My favorite movie is uh, uh, La Reine Margot, The Queen Margot, which is French movie from 1905, because I love the history and I love costume movies. Uh, so maybe this is my dream to play in something like that. But, you know, it always goes with the very, very huge budget. And uh, I love this movie. This is drama movie. Uh, but very well done with beautiful, uh, beautiful um, camera work because it actually reminds the pictures, reminds you the paintings from from the days which are uh, told in the story. Mm. And but lately I've seen the Elvis movie and I really liked it. I really like Baz Luhrmann and. I think uh, the idea to tell the story through this, uh, this Tom Parker character, which was villain too, actually, yeah. was very nice idea, really. He's telling us the story. This is wonderful. And he destroyed Elvis. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Um, so um, look into the future. What does the future hold for girls to buy? Uh, I'm wondering uh, uh, what is the future after the girls to buy? Or yeah, no, no. The what, is the, what does the future hold for it? Because it is released on VOD uh, soon. Uh, so, what does uh, the future yeah. hold? Do you want? Uh, how, like, do you see it developing into a series of films, or like, what would you oh, like to uh, see? Uh huh. Um, I don't think so, because like the story we wanted to share. It's already told, it's finished. Like the, the person we were mostly inspiring, I mean, the protagonist, she's completely changed her life. So it would be difficult to find that we, like uh, the producers would have to dig something new to the story, to, to tell, to make it more interesting. Because 
nowadays she's you know leading a peaceful life with husband and with daughter so uh, I don't see that coming but I'm really fascinating what what the impressions will be from the viewers because uh, I got a lot of messages uh, from Polish viewers and as well from the viewers from the other countries where movie was screened and uh, it was very very nice because for example mothers were uh, writing like oh my god this is such an important movie now i can see like what is dangerous for my kid and uh, especially today in this instagram era because uh, uh, i know from the insiders from the luxury prostitution industry like nowadays instagram or tiktok are the marketplace to make your commercial as a, a, a as a as a sex worker so uh, it's really, uh, I'm really pretty curious what people are gonna take from this, uh, from this movie. Okay. Um, so with the popularity of streaming services like Netflix, um, and obviously they were live blood over the last couple of years, uh, what do you think the future of cinema is? Uh, I think this movie won't be so popular because we are not, uh, you know, like, uh, mm, I don't know, I'm not expecting anything. Just, uh, you can never expect, for example, this Polish movie, 365 days, uh, it was a big surprise that it was so huge uh, all over around the world. But here, I, I don't know, I really don't know. It's not such a um, international topic uh, I, and not such a universal story. Um, it's very about Poland and about the luxurious um, industry, luxurious sex working industry. Uh, it's very interesting for the, the European girls to watch. I mean, especially for Eastern European, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and what are you hoping audiences will take away from girls to buy when they see it? Obviously, uh, you touched on the reactions that you've already had, but what are you hoping when it goes wider? Uh, I think what you can take from this movie is like this is there is no such a thing as easy money you have to pay for everything and uh, there is no such a thing like a free lunch for example as well because mm -hmm. this is how uh, the manipulators work and you can see like in our movie we tell the story my character is a manipulator she's she has to get more girls, more girls to work, and they don't want to work, so she's manipulating them, she's giving them gifts, you know, and this is how she's dragging them into the industry. So, uh, so I think this is a lesson, and the lesson is like, uh, uh, the luxus, it's not every, luxury lifestyle, it's not everything, and you have to pay price for it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what are you working on presently that you're allowed to talk about? I know you mentioned your thriller before. Uh, yeah, I'm working right now on the TV series uh, for uh, Canal Plus. This is a French, uh, French platform, which is in Poland. And this is uh, the TV series with the supernatural elements. And uh, I have two movies right now coming in uh, this autumn to Poland. Um, and one is very interesting because it's about the body swap. It's a comedy. The husband and wife, one day they argue and they wake up and they just change their bodies. So it was interesting to play guy because I thought <laughs> like I'm very tolerant and I'm very socialist person and then and liberal. And then it turned out that I have read a lot of uh, stereotypes about men. While I was playing men, it turned out, but it helped, helped, helped me to become a better partner, actually. Because now I understand my partner and I now I understand like when he is not reacting for the stress, it doesn't mean that he doesn't care. It just means he don't want to, you know, uh, he don't want to make the problem bigger, 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 and uh, uh, evaluate his emotional stress. 
So uh, I think uh, it's interesting. And, and this is a movie about empathy. And uh, I learned by myself uh, something from this, uh, from this movie. Cool. Looking forward to that when it comes here. Um, where can we find you online to keep up with everything you're doing? You can find me on Instagram, of course, uh, and you can find me on the Internet Movie Database uh, as well. So uh, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Yesterday I was eating uh, dinner because uh, I'm on a holidays. I was eating dinner down here in Croatia and uh, the little girl wrote me on the Instagram. Oh my God, I'm sorry, Polish girl. She was like, oh my God, I'm sorry I'm writing so lately but uh it was you in the restaurant i've seen you were making photos with the uh langustine with the shrimp <laughs> and this is true i was kind of you know uh, i was after wine and i was making funny photos with my husband with the uh shrimp <laughs> but it was kind of embarrassing that she noticed it <laughs> all right awesome that's great um and she didn't come up to you i guess <laughs> yeah all right, well, thank you so much for talking to me today. This has been absolutely incredible. Um, congratulations on the you. film. And um, yeah, I look out for everything you're doing next. And uh, and yeah, I hope, I hope to see more of your work coming to the UK. Um, thank you very much, and Mark. And I hope you get that costume, costume drama at some point. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, look after Bye. yourself. Thank Take care. Bye. Take care, you too. Bye. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. Remember it is us who shag them. And it is never us who are shagged by them. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.